Hi guys. Ah! Talk about filming with a view. I have to show you where I'm filming right now. Anyway, um, I hope you guys are well. I'm desperate to get like back on the YouTube grind. I feel like it's been a while since I've been like in the flow. I just wanted to give you something, something to chew on, but as I'm away, I don't think I'm gonna have as much time. So I thought, okay, perfect. Perfect time to do a little Q&A. It's been a while. I put up on my story half an hour ago, exactly. Ask me guys some questions. Ask me guys some questions. Guys asked me some questions and you guys came through. I'm just gonna go through, pick the ones I think will be most helpful for you guys and we'll go from there. So first one is how do you deal with bad body image days? Now this is something that I have like a really simple answer for. I feel like everybody deals with like body dysmorphia, bad body image days and some more so than others for sure. I think the way that I deal with it is that on the bad body image days I just don't look. Like I I don't pull myself, I don't pick myself to pieces. I honestly don't wear things that mean that I have to like look at it. So what I will do is I'll just kind of allow myself to be in my feels about how I'm feeling, but I just won't concentrate on it. And so what I'll do is I'll just cover up, I'll wear something that I feel comfortable in, especially if I'm going to gym, it's so important to wear something you feel comfortable in and that can look different for every single person. But I'll cover up and I won't stand like in front of the mirrors and um, I'll just focus on something else. You know, there's so much more to life than how you, how you look and how you feel. And I think understanding that like, it ebbs and flows for me really helps uh, guide me through it. So yeah, I would say just kind of distract yourself from it if you, the best you can, if you can. What do you do when you think you've hit a rut in your progress? So if you feel like you've hit a rut, I feel like it's time to shake it up. Like it's time to shake it up. Time to just like reassess, okay? There must, there's got to be a reason you're feeling like this. Maybe you've been on the same program for a while, or maybe you're, you've been training and you've not been really seeing any successes. I, I really am a firm believer that like, it's better to just like chew a little bit at, at a time, right? Because it's like, you wanna, oh, hello. You wanna experience like rewards. You wanna feel pleased with your, what you're doing. It will really help like guide your motivation and like positive reinforcement. It makes a real difference. For me, what really helps is like, connecting with what do I enjoy, connecting with like my why, why am I here, what do I enjoy, what do I like, what, what really lights me up, and then just do that. I also think mixing things up is really, really helpful. Hi! What are you all doing? I'm filming on YouTube. I also feel like switching it up is really, really helpful. If you've been working on the same program for a while, you're naturally gonna reach like a plateau, a rut. It's also just gonna get a little bit boring for you, so definitely do that. And also, sometimes you might just need a little bit of time off and you might need to step away for a little bit. So really like tune into like your body and what your body's trying to tell you and like work out, is this a mind thing or is this a body thing? Do I need some time off? Am I in a rut? Like, do I need to just respect that I'm feeling like I'm in a rut? Or do I actually need to just like give my brain something else like more interesting to like work on? So yeah, hope that helps. What advice do you have for absolute beginners? God, I could go on because there's so many things I want to tell you. But let me keep it short and sweet. What would I say off the top of my head? I would say don't be hard on yourself. Nobody starts anything in life knowing exactly what they're meant to be doing. Blah, 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 blah. knowing what they're meant to be doing and also getting it right and getting it form and, da, 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 and being the best at it like just really be gentle with yourself and be patient that's another thing remember to ask questions do ask questions the pts aren't as intimidating as you think they are i used to be absolutely petrified of not only the PTs, but of like fear of judgment from the PTs that I didn't know anything. But let me tell you that PTs, and if they're a good PT, find nothing more like beautiful and amazing than seeing newbies at the gym. And you know, these people are passionate, well you'd hope, about their jobs. And, um, and actually, you know what, this goes for anyone that's more exper experienced. I know it can be like super intimidating walking into a space where everybody knows something more than you and you're just like, oh my God, I do not know where to begin. But 
these people, for the most part, are super, super passionate about it. That's why they are so experienced, and that's why they know so much. And um, so for me, there's nothing more I love than seeing a beginner at a gym. You really want to work on like nailing the form, nailing it correctly, and um, doing it at whatever weight that might be for you, rather than just like absolutely just like smashing it, having form breakdown, trying to lift as much as you can with brute brute strength. What else would I say? Protein, 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 protein. Uh, what else would I say? Um, I would say if you really want to see like realistic changes in your body, aim for three times a week. I think that would be good. I would probably just end it by saying trust the goddamn process. It can be frustrating, as anything can be, learning something new, but just trust it and um, know that like this is the start of something really special. I think more than anything, what I would take, uh, what I would say advice-wise for beginners would be just to ask questions, be gentle with yourself, and to have fun. How often do you train abs? I really don't train abs at all. I would say for the past uh, couple of months, I have been training abs on and off, but I have been training abs like three times a week. Um, and that would be simply one exercise at the end of a session that might be like cable crunches or it might be like leg raises, uh, like hanging leg raises. Um, and I actually have seen a lot of improvement with my, uh, the aesthetics of my abs, um, like borderline coming on like six pack. Uh, when I was away before I went to Thailand, I, everyone was like, God damn. And I was like, God damn, I couldn't believe it. I had like real, real abs and, you know, without really much improvement in my diet. Um, however, I would say a lot of my core strength and a lot of my ab work comes from doing compound movements. And this is something that I wish more people knew about because everyone's like, how do I get a six pack ab, abs, 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 abs? You just honestly need to do compounds. They are your squats, your deadlifts, your um, Romania deadlifts, your bench. And a lot of the time, if you're doing it correctly, you are really engaging that core. And so inevitably you will build the strength there. So yeah, um, I would say, yeah, I've always, they're, they're always working. However, I would say recently I have been doing them a few more times and I did see a lot of progress. And when I stopped training as much recently and because I've been traveling and that sort of thing, I have noticed them go away. So yeah. What's your favorite pair of gym shorts? That is a good question. Certainly one of my favorites I actually have on me somewhere. These were like my first um, shorts that I ever bought. Well, I, items of clothing I ever bought from Gymshark. When I started really, really training properly and being consistent with it, I didn't really know what I was doing, but when I was being consistent with it, I said to myself, if I go three times a week, by the end of the month, I'm gonna treat myself. And I would say also, if you are struggling to be consistent, I would definitely do that because it does work. And it, you know, it's, it's really nice to feel that sense of achievement and be like, you know what? I'm gonna reward myself for this. But these are the Gymshark Adapt animal. I don't think they sell this colorway anymore, but they definitely still sell the similar ones. I'll insert some pictures here anyway, but I love these. They have um, just like the material is a really interesting material that I don't really come across that much. I have literally, as you guys know, tried and tested like every single gym brand out there, quite honestly, at this point. They've got quite a thick waistband, which I like, but they've got a longer leg and then they've got the perfect a, a scrunch at the back as well but then they've got the perfect amount of like stretch but like it's a thick material so it kind of like holds you in no stretch mark uh, stretch marks no sweat marks and yeah I just love these they're like my favorites they like I've obviously gone away and I've like packed minimal stuff and these will always be in my wardrobe so yeah I, w I definitely would recommend those what's the best workout split for beginners I would say you know, everyone's going to say different things, right? I would say personally, if you are a true, true beginner and you're starting out, you know, you're probably going to be working against like motivation, consistency. You're not really going to know. You probably won't know too much as well. So you'll be kind of like absorbing everything and it might feel quite overwhelming. Um, to begin with, I would honestly start with full body exercise uh, workouts. I wouldn't do a whole split like push pull da, 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 or shoulders and back and da, da. I would literally keep it simple and do full body and also one of the ab advantages of doing full body is that you're working 
the muscles on a more fe frequent frequent basis so therefore um, you'll see better gains if you're doing a little bit of each throughout the week rather than doing like leg lower body and upper body if you if you're spreading it uh, I think that there's much more of an advantage to doing that so I would honestly say full body um, I think it would be less intense like you would get less intense doms you're going to be aching a lot when you first start so um oh hello again <laughs> um yeah you're going to be aching a lot less by doing so yeah i would say start off with full body ex workouts and then um if you are being really consistent and you are like feeling like you want to like up it or you know you're certainly going three to four times a week. What really worked for me was a push-pull legs when I was doing three days. And then after that, I started going to up to four days, which is what I've always, I've kind of pretty much stayed at now. I do four days and I do push-pull quads and calves, ha um, hamstrings and glutes. Do you need to take supplement powders in order to gain muscle as a female? Um, no, absolutely not, not at all. And in fact, I, my, supplement usage is really quite low at the moment supplements there's a hint in the name are used to supplement your diet always be grateful you to get your sources of protein from food naturally however you know there'll be times or situations where you aren't able to get in the required intake and so therefore you supplement it so it's kind of like a convenience thing um, and it's kind of like a fail safe option, but it definitely isn't like the necessary option. It just kind of makes life a little bit easier. So um, yeah, it's a quick way to get in like what, 35 grams of protein. Females generally will build muscle a lot slower than men do. I kind of just generally in life, I try to make sure that I'm hitting protein like pretty much for every meal. For every meal I'll make sure I've got like eggs or I've got like meat or other people would make sure they've got like legumes. I'm actually allergic to that so I can't do that but yeah like nuts and that sort of thing. Uh, a lot of people are asking are personal trainers a must and um, no they're not. It's definitely not essential however the other option would be that you would need to learn it all yourself, which of course can take time. We've all got like super busy lives. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's absolutely not a must. I guess if you're trying to like lose weight, you're trying to gain muscle, you're trying to build strength. An essential of that would be making sure you're doing it correctly. Otherwise you won't see the results that you're looking for. And if you don't know the information, then you're not gonna get it. So for me, I have done everything without a personal trainer, but that's because I just completely threw myself into learning. I started doing like a PT course myself. So I was learning stuff there. Um, social media is amazing for it, as long as you're reading people that are actually credible. Not essential, however, it does make life a lot easier. How to deal with comparing your body to others. God, what a loaded question. I'm gonna see, I'm like gonna correct myself on screen if I'm wrong, because I can't actually remember if this is right, but like if it is, say. So. Um, you know that thing where it's like comparison is a thief of joy? I hope that's what it is. Um, if it isn't, we'll go with it. Um, so it's like, whenever I have moments where I'm like feeling down about myself, I'm feeling vulnerable or I'm feeling like I'm not doing great and I'm just like thinking all these negative thoughts. A lot of the time when I check myself and I step back from like the situation and how I'm feeling, a lot of the time it's come from me comparing myself to others. And when I don't do that, I am so much happier for it. I am so much more fulfilled and so you know, sometimes I have to really check myself and be like, whoa, what are you doing? Because we're all on our own journeys. That is like the crux of it. We are all on our own journeys. And like truly, 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 what is comparing yourself going to do? Like what, what is there to gain on it? It won't do you any good at all. Just don't, just don't, just don't do it. Just really train your brain not to. That's what's helped me. Starting a cut next week. Please give me tips, it's my first time. Okay, so the crux 
of losing weight is as simple as this, okay? I'm gonna say it slowly, I'm gonna say it loudly, I'm gonna say it clearly. You need to be consuming less than you are using, okay? If you are consuming, e.g. eating, drinking, more than you're burning, you will not lose weight, okay? This is gonna look very different from individual to individual. You really just need to like understand that the cut is gonna be about you burning more than you're eating. What is something you wish you had known when starting your fitness journey? All right, I'm gonna get all cutesy. I didn't realize that there is a space for everybody at the gym and that no matter who you are, where you're from, how much experience you've got, the gym will welcome you with opening arms. I put it off for so, so long and I have found so much happiness and joy and uh, health and friendship from the gym. And yeah, I just think like, I really had a lot of like misconceptions based off of the stereotypes we all hear about gym. And I think it really kind of contributed to my gym, my gym anxiety. But I think if I had known that it's a really safe place and that there's a lot of really amazing people there that really care and will really uh, like back you and ride for you and uh, want you to be like the best version of yourself that you can be, then I think it would have made a big difference sooner. I mean, eventually I got around to that way of thinking, but I, I just really would tell, I would love to tell myself that. Okay, I can't for the life of me figure out how long to rest between reps and sets. Please help, love you. Love you too. Um, okay, so I'm gonna pop this on the screen. Take a screenshot. There's a lot of information out there online. I promise you, if you have a question, Google it. And I do not mean that in a sarcastic way at all. I mean as in genuinely, like there are so many answers to things that you probably don't even realize. I remember when I started being so confused, like, so like, how long do I wait before I do, you know? There's different ways of doing it and it kind of depends on like what you're training for and like what you're getting out of it. I guess just really be mindful that a lot of people don't rest for as long as they should be and that could actually be killing their gains. I know what it's like when you're training by yourself, you're just like, uh, okay, should I just continue? And like, I'll definitely do it where I've like only rested for like one minute and it's like, mm, I probably should have done a bit longer than that. Um, but yeah, do definitely make sure you're taking your time with it because um, you wanna make sure you're properly, oh my God, doggy, hi. You wanna make sure you're like rested and recovered and able to really go for the next set rather than kind of just like being able to like half do it because you've not recovered properly. How do you cope with losing progress? Love your content. Oh, this is something I'm currently dealing with, as you guys I'm sure have seen on my Instagram. I have been traveling quite a lot and um, kind of finding my, I've been frolicking around Southeast Asia and there's been a lot of times where I've not been able to train or I've not been able to access like a proper gym. And probably like my, my, my strength is at a low point and I've definitely lo lost muscle mass. And so it's something that I'm really having to work on in just like being really like mentally resilient with losing gains and maybe not being as like defined as I was before, not having as much strength, not being as like muscular as I was. And I guess it's probably like definitely a mind thing in terms of like coping and it's a skill to be like resilient and to be able to like reason with yourself and understand that fitness and strength and how you look and whatever is not guaranteed it's not like you, you okay I do it for a year I've got it for a lifetime it's not like oh I've done it this week it's really something you have to work at because it's something that you can lose and so I guess something that really helps me is like seeing it as a journey and not a race I don't know it's something I'm still learning to be honest um, but it's definitely like a mental thing for sure do you currently have your dream body or is it always a work in progress? I, yeah, I would say it's definitely a work in progress. My camera just died. Let's hope this one's better. I don't even know where I was up to. Oh, dream body. Yeah, it's definitely something where like it, it moves with time. The pillar of like what you think is like possible, what you think 
you are capable of constantly moves and like pushes further and further and I think definitely put your body you 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 you're with your body you live in your body every day and so you're not necessarily able to like track the changes because you're just there experiencing it real time and so I think like certainly the certainly my body I yeah definitely I'm not there with it yeah my dream body is like Ali's Love it, it's on my vision board. I feel like you make friends in the gym so easily. Any advice for a shy gym rat? Absolutely, I am, I am your girl. Okay, so I totally understand, right, how intimidating it can feel to like even think about approaching someone, especially if you're an introvert, but if you're an extrovert as well, like it can feel really like, how do I do this? How do I? It's literally as simple as just kind of like looking over in someone's direction, smiling, maybe saying hi, maybe asking for a question, maybe asking them a question or saying, can I jump in with your sets? But for me personally, I just like to make conversation with people and you would be so surprised at the amount of people that are just like, yeah, and then they'll continue talking. When you do engage with someone, it's just a lot, it just goes a lot smoother than you think and it's also such a like, good exercise in just like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. Compliments go such a long way, complimenting someone on literally anything, their form, saying, oh, I love your t-shirt, where's it from? Or like, you can generally like tell the kind of people that are open to a conversation, like get like observant. So like they might not be wearing music, you might see them chatting with loads of other people. If there's someone that like is constantly kind of like, oh, hi, 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 chances are they'll probably be exactly the same with you. Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that gives you some advice to like chew on. Um, I do have some stuff on TikTok that I've been doing and I will do certainly more, especially as I've moved to like a new city now and I'm finding myself that I need to like make some friends because I literally don't know anyone. Um, so yeah, I will definitely keep doing that series because I think it does help people out. Okay guys, I think that is everything. The sun is setting and I have answered quite a few questions now. So hopefully that helped you out. Um, Thank you so much for watching if you've got all the way through. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.